Okay, people, so Boruto episode 207 is a prime example, an absolute perfect example of how this series and this franchise could be top tier without relying on the previous generation of Naruto, Sasuke, Sakura, etc, etc, because this episode to put it very very light it slapped okay it was something else and i am very very happy and i almost would even use the word proud to be honest with you that it really was at the level and tier that it was because it demonstrated a few different things i think it showcased some of the best that boruto naruto next generations has to offer in terms of again not relying on everything that naruto was to be great because one of the things that you know haters naysayers alike of boruto naruto next generations have always said is that this series is only good it's only tolerable whenever it focuses in on naruto and sasuke having a fight or something along the lines of that like the previous generation has to carry this series because without them in the picture nobody cares it's not good etc etc and if boruto episode 207 didn't demonstrate the exact opposite then i don't know fam you didn't watch the episode because it really showcased the opposite but people we got a lot to talk about we got sarada having a an epic moment we got Boros boomer ass running around like yo and then of course of course something that i did not expect to get in this episode i thought it was going to be revealed next episode that boruto momoshiki possessed form boru shiki oh my god let's talk a little bit of that boruto hold up hold up i gotta say it great yes people Boruto greatness i know i know no matter how you know, yeah. So Boruto episode 207 picks up from where the last one left off in the knee deep aspects of new team 7 Kawaki Sarada Mitsuki Boruto versus Boro and yeah it's showcasing that Boro is definitely a credible threat it's showcasing that Boro is nothing to mess around with because they're still somewhat at a loss in the beginning of the episode now granted they have a few things figured out for starters this big virus thing that is like whoa how do you get around it well Mitsuki which it seems as though they wanted to give Mitsuki some moments of basically him deducing things because just keeping it real with episode 207 it was multiple times where i'm like damn while other people you know kawaki's blasting off sarada's doing this and that mitsuki took a lot of l's like when he tried to do the combo attack of using electricity and stuff like that boom he gets bopped and then he gets stomped out later on in the episode and i'm like god damn so they had to give him something and him coming up with the antibody for the virus and shit like that is like okay and then the previous episode they gave him what was originally in the manga one of sarada's moments of deducing things so it's like he was the brains a lot and like you know he was detective conan almost you could say of this whole battle and that's the role that they assigned him because again like i said throughout the episode it was like god damn mitsuki like combat wise you ain't rescuing boruto shit you getting stomped the hell out and despite the fact that they're using combo attacks in the beginning of the episode is to no avail like you know boro is just straight up molly whopping they asses and i like that they called it the new team seven right they they refer to it i want to say it was at the end of the last episode this is the new team seven so it actually utilized that idea with kawaki like when he's pulling sada side and yo use that shit what is it called again Sharingan like that showcased again like yeah this is a new team 7 this is things is different Kawaki obviously moves different he's not a real shinobi at the end of the day he hasn't had any true formal training or at the very least I think the anime gave him a little bit and maybe even in the manga he had like a few moments of training with Naruto and stuff like that but he's not really like you know what I'm saying he would be the very beginning he probably had to go to the academy so he's not a full on full blown shinobi he just has a lot of training and fighting because of all the shit he went through with you know Kara and stuff like that but just showcase those moments of them working together with Kawaki really demonstrates the new Team 7 and I gotta say hands down minus one moment that people could argue for the most part this entire fight this entire scene everything regarding Boro has just been done better in the anime everything about Boro everything about this fight with Boro the anime just did it better hands down like maybe one moment maybe two moments at most is debatable like for a start or something that was left out entirely from this fight regarding Sarada that we'll get to 
one a little bit. You could argue that. There's some debate, maybe I really wouldn't debate it, to be honest with you, regarding the ending of this episode, whether or not the manga did it better, because I've really loved it in the anime as well. For the most part, everything about this is more entertaining, it's more exciting, it's more thrilling. The animation was great, the art was great. This episode was like, you know, it wasn't the stellar, you know, 20 out of 10, but it was damn near 8 to 9 out of 10 art and animation. No complaints here at all. I'm not even gonna say it was like iffy, like, no, it was really freaking good. At times, some of the Sakuga looked great too. And I gotta commend Studio Piro. Like, when they mess up, when they're on their bullshit, when they're doing non-stop anime, canon, whatever the heck you want to call it, I gotta call them out on it. But when they're doing good stuff, like what they did with this whole entire section of Boro, and ever since Boro was introduced into the anime, yeah, I'm gonna give them their praise too. And they've done a phenomenal job handling everything to do with Boro, including this fight. But let's get to a little bit of Sarala, because she does have some of her moments in this episode, like I said. But they did leave out something major. She was supposed to unlock her third Tomo in her Sharingan in this fight and it didn't happen. In fact, I want to say it was just before this fight that she barely just unlocked her second Tomo. So it seems as though potentially we're going to get her unlocking her third Tomo and possibly an anime original episode or anime original arc for that matter, which I'm imagining that's where we're leaning towards. If you've seen, I talked a little bit about some of the upcoming episodes in my latest episode of Forever News. I talked about that. There's going to be some anime original stuff that's coming. Maybe that's where Sadala is going to unlock it. Maybe they're going to add, who knows, another filler member of Kara in between stuff because we're starting to get really close to the manga and we don't want to catch up because then we're going to go the route of what happened with Black Clover. We'll be on either hiatus or over for a while. So we don't want that to happen. They're probably gearing up for a big anime, you know, original stuff. And that's probably where we're going to get the third Tomo. But it's debatable. Like, yes, out of that had some really epic moments, but it would have been cool to see that Tomo as well. So I guess we got to wait and see. I'm glad that they didn't forget it, though. I'm pretty sure that wasn't forgotten because they were like, OK, we didn't give her a Tomo, but she's going to be one of the stars of this one. We're going to really showcase that she is a true leader, a captain, and all of the above. And I'm not going to lie, <laughs> Boro throughout this episode, because, you know, it starts off, he's still kind of clothed, but by the end of the episode, this dude is a half-naked boomer looking like he's in a freaking leotard, and I'm just like, Boro? <laughs> I was never a fan of Boro's character design, I'm not even going to lie, like, he just, he looks like a creep, and then when you see him in the leotard, I'm just like, oh, you're, you're a full-blown creep, huh? <laughs> Oh, shit. And once again, we got to talk more Sarala because she was the one that was able to discern where the core was and how the core was moving around inside of Boro's body, which that was epic and amazing in and of itself. And then the art and animation yet again, when Sarala goes in to get Boro's core from his body using the Chidori. And I'm like, yo, first of all, if I'm not mistaken, first female in the entirety of Naruto, Boruto, all of the above to use the Chidori using her father's one of his signature moves. Moves. Obviously, I believe Kakashi had some similar the Raikiti. Was it Raikiti, if I'm not mistaken? But, you know, that, that's a very powerful move. And seeing her use it, they did her justice in the anime with the art and animation. It looked phenomenal when she blasted through Boro. I was like, yo, big, big ups to Sarada. Like, yo, it's crazy because you would think that, like, you know, maybe some of the other characters would have been the standouts. Like, Sarada was a big standout in this battle. In fact, like, if I was to put it in order of, like, who stood out the most... And, Let's exclude Boro Shiki because that was at the very end. And if it was that, you know, adding, then yeah, probably Boro Shiki was like the big deal for me. But Sarada would be number one in terms of like, holy shit, she really did her thing. I'd put Sarada, probably Kawaki number two, Boro to number three, and unfortunately, um, Mitsuki number four. Because Mitsuki, he did some things, but he was just getting stomped out left and right. And that Chidori scene for Sarada was phenomenal. And following removing his core, she grabs it looking epic and smashes it with her hand. She crumbles it to dust and yeah Boro uh, he went into his semi-perfect cell like he went full-blown semi-perfect cell in my opinion after the core was removed because it looked like he lost a little bit of his intelligence I don't know if it was because he was in a rage induced state or something because following that like he went into this giant form his hair grew longer and he just kind of looked like a blithering idiot like he was just smashing shit around for a while like with no regard almost looking like he couldn't control himself and again maybe it was something like a his circuits went haywire so to speak because remember he is a cyborg throughout the episode is demonstrated yo He's a cyborg. That's how he's able to move his core, which is kind of like his heart around his body. He's a cyborg and he kind of like derped for a moment. Like he caught a virus or something. But I'd be lying if I didn't say, yo, it was kind of funny how like, yo, Boro's back there smashing, going crazy. And they're walking around like, I think Kawaki's carrying Boruto or some shit. And they're like, hey, we're going to walk into the sunset. Like, yo, fam, y'all don't realize the big raging imbecile is right behind y'all. Like, what? why are y'all 
walk in like, hey, you know, sunshine and rainbows. Like, no, there's a threat right behind you guys. And they proceed to the bowl of ramen that Naruto is locked in. <laughs> the big jar that Naruto is sealed in. And I ain't gonna lie, it did feel convenient to me personally of Kawaki saying like, yo, Boruto, hold your hand out. We can use the space-time jutsu and remove him from there. Like, uh, Boruto's never done any of this shit in his life up until very, very recently. And it's kind of like, how are y'all able to... I mean, I guess Kawaki would have a little bit more of a grasp on it. But Boruto, it's more so like Boruto's on autopilot when it comes to the karma shit. It's like, it just happens. Like, he shouldn't know how to do any of this. He hasn't had any formal training. There's not really much knowledge about karma and shit. So I was kind of like, okay, you know. And they removed Naruto from the pot. He's unconscious after that ass whooping him and Sasuke caught from Jigen. Like, yo, just think about it. Jigen whipped their asses so bad they both were in a coma. Like, Naruto's unconscious right there. And Sasuke, last time we seen him, his wife was there trying to heal him in a hospital bed. He's unconscious. That is, that's probably the worst ass whippings they've ever taken, in my opinion. I mean, I guess aside from when Madara stabbed through Sasuke, that was pretty freaking brutal as well. But, the happy moment of rescuing the non-Daime Hokage, which, by the way, just want to throw in there. I like how it was kind of personalizing how everybody felt. Where Kawaki's like, yeah, so, you know, I'm gonna rescue the, the non-Daime. And then Boruto's like, no, that's my father. I'm gonna be the one to rescue him. And then Sarada's like, no, that's the seventh that I've always looked up to. I'm, you know, it was all them personalizing. And then here comes Weirdo Mitsuki like, oh, don't worry, Boruto. I'm gonna rescue you. I'm like, Orochimaru, what did you put in his cells? <laughs> Miski gotta be the odd man out. You gotta love it because it's always like, you know, it comes in very awkwardly that it's perfect to like fit within like everybody's in there like, yeah, I'm gonna rescue Naruto and he's like, Naruto, I'm here. <laughs> And Mitsuki's awkward moment is short-lived because Boro smashes him into the freaking ground like if he's a freaking ant. And I'm like, god damn, you know, Mitsuki throughout this episode, like I said, in the new Team 7, he will probably place fourth aside from, again, he did some really, you know, notable things in terms of, you know, discerning the virus and coming up with an antibody. And then last week, like, you know, so he did some things, but in terms of just taking L's, like, you know, like I said earlier in the episode when they did the combo attack and he gets blown with the virus and shit. And then now this, I'm like, sheesh. Because Boro, he kind of caught a little bit of his, you know, mind back. At the very least, he understands, like, okay, these are the people that did this to me. And he's, like, smashing on them. And shout-outs to Kawaki again. Like, not only earlier in the episode, he kept on blasting through him. Then right then and there, if I'm not mistaken, Kawaki's, like, the first person to start firing off on Boro. Like, Kawaki, he's nothing to fuck with, okay? But Boro is just in an, a complete outrage. He knocks Kawaki away. He knocks everybody away, including Boruto. And I'm not gonna lie, when he is smashing Boruto, because he punched him, like, I don't know, 20 freaking times into the ground cracking the ground and shit i'm like world should be dead <laughs> Like, he got really, really hurt there. He should be dead or something there. Like, holy shit, at the very least, broken bones. Because, god damn, the way he was pounding him, he pounded him unconscious. And I like that till the very end, at the very least, Boro sticks to the motif that they have really added for, you know, the anime. He's like, I would, you know, you're just a shinobi. I was picked by God himself. Like, who do you think you are? As he's in a freaking, he almost looks like a, a hillbilly that was in a drunken rage or some shit like that. But amongst the ass whipping, as he's about to hit the final blow on Boruto, Boruto disappears, and behind him is a floating horned Boruto with one eye looking like it has Byakugan activated and a blue aura, and again, he's floating, and uh, yeah, he says, don't get cocky, you inferior creature. Uh, Boruto, seemingly possessed by Momoshiki, as dubbed by the fandom, Boroshiki is here. I did not expect to get that in this episode at all. I thought that was gonna be next week. Kudos to that shit like oh, wow and overall boruto episode 207 was very very impactful i feel like to a certain degree should have been from the start of like this is how you showcase a spin-off sequel without relying on the previous gen this is how you do it this new team 7 is awesome this battle was awesome it's crazy that again i can say that hands down the anime slayed this shit the manga i didn't care about boro i didn't care about this fight it wasn't until boro shiki showed up that i gave a slither of a fuck about any of this like honestly the anime made me care about sarada doing her thing it made me care about Kawa he blasting off like the anime just added so much more it made me care about Boro like hey he's a freak and he's into this whole cult shit that he got going on like it just did so much and that that ending was just uh not to mention Sarada the MVP of this episode with that whole Chidori and ah uh, Boruto if only it would be almost always like this which to be fair since we've started Kara since we started the Kara activation it has been sticking to this we are golden and if it just keeps on doing this we will be golden of like people won't be able to say that we we need Naruto and Sasuke anymore. No, we need the new Team 7. And hell, if we gotta rescue Naruto and Sasuke, so be it. <laughs>
But I'm very curious what you guys thought about this episode. How did you feel about the new Team 7 versus Boro? What do you think about Sarada with her Chidori? Uh, what did you think about her not activating her third Tomo? When do you think they're gonna do that? Uh, how did you feel about Boro as a villain? Uh, your expectations for this Boro Shiki, Momo Shiki possessed Boro Toe? And uh, where do you think it's all gonna go with Boro Toe episode 208 and beyond? I'm looking forward to it very immensely. Like, yeah. Boruto on a very very high upward trajectory to say the least but that's all i have for this one thanks for watching hope you enjoyed if you liked anything i had to say or enjoyed the video drop me a like i'd greatly appreciate it and if you want more from me make sure to subscribe follow me on twitter instagram hit that bell to get all notifications and if you want to follow any of my other social media links are in the description below i'm from the world and as always people have an awesome day and remember the golden rule anime and manga Police, have an awesome day peace in and yo shout outs to the new team seven shout outs to studio puro for everything that they did with this episode uh shout outs to sarada shout outs to just uh, greatness we don't need naruto and sasuke all the time anymore uh boruto is starting to stand on its own took a long while but we here fam we made it <laughs>